Hey everyone and welcome back to another tutorial. Now last week we looked at how to create this procedural geometry node system for Blender to create these huge city landscapes but we were very simple with the actual buildings. They were very basic, they were just cubes that were stretched and if you actually added textures to these they would start to get all warped. So today we're going to look at creating some more custom buildings and how you might go about doing this I'm not going to go into specific detail on creating buildings individually. There are other tutorials for that, but this is more to just give you an idea on how you could start adding more detail and randomness to your buildings. We're also going to look at how to texture the buildings too, in order to add some actual building textures to them and make sure that they're not just uh, images or solid colors. That being said, there is a link in the description to download this file off of Gumroad where you can just get access to it straight away but i would recommend following the tutorial along as well just to get an insight into what i'm actually doing so you can follow along and understand what the geometry node setup is doing and how the materials are working as well if you're not already please consider subscribing and let's get straight into the video all right so with the previous version we had just these two basic cubes um, but today we're going to sort of adjust them a bit more and not rely so much on the scaling factor within the geometry nodes we want to sort of create buildings that don't really have to be scaled too much. And that basically comes down to just making a load of different size buildings. So in our collections panel, let's make a, a new collection, let's call it buildings two, so it's separate. And with a new cube, we're gonna put it in here and call it building one. And essentially what I'm gonna do now is scale this cube up and keep duplicating it and just randomize the facades on this building. And that's gonna be a mixture of the tools you're seeing on screen right now. So E to extrude, I to insert and control R to add loop cuts so you can quite easily and quickly just sort of mold and shape different shaped buildings so they're not just all the same tall cube and we can just add a few different variations to the way this looks and again you can go into more detail on this on your own this is more just for demo purposes now the next thing we want to do is use the array modifier to help again not stretch the geometry but take what we've already got and just duplicate it to make them taller. So let's take this building as well, using the array node, add two, add another one on the Z. And you can also use the mirror modifier as well to just add more variation to buildings again without having to do too much on the modeling side. So there we go, we've got a few different big buildings in various heights. You could even add a, even taller buildings with the array modifier. Um, but let's create some even smaller buildings. And to do that, we're gonna add a plane. And if we come down here and subdivide the plane, just a few times, let's do three times. And what we're gonna do, similar to how we cut out the road in the last video, we're gonna just select some faces randomly on here and then press E to extrude them up. And then we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna adjust the heights, do sort of E to extrude, I to insert, um, and just give these some variation as well. So we're sort of creating mini buildings out of the same mesh that will be distributed uh, to really increase that density even further. And we're just going to do that a couple more times on different planes. So we're kind of getting three to four buildings per object at this point. And again, you can just do this as many times as you want. You could do this for like 10, 20, 30, 40 different clusters of buildings to really increase that randomness in the uh, variation of the buildings. Now let's make sure we move these out of our buildings collection because we want them to be part of a different system. So first of all, let's call them something like on the cluster yeah, cluster one, cluster two, if I can spell cluster. Select both of these and on our 3D viewport, press M, add collection and call this cluster, cluster, cl oh my, cl cluster, to, cl clusters, clusters. Okay, there we go. Press the little arrow here and that will move them into this new collection. Now in our geometry node system, if we go to our first one and change it to clusters for our smaller buildings, you'll see already We've updated all of our individual cubes with these sort of three to four buildings. And because we've done this on a plane, just change that transform from one to zero just to make everything flat. And there we go. On our second one that was for our bigger buildings in the geometry nodes, if we change this to our new sort of individual buildings, uh, you'll see these are huge, but let's just play around with these scale values a little bit more. Uh, we want these to have less variation between the min and max because we don't want them to stretch as much. We'll do this for the clusters as well. Just bring them down um, so they're closer together. We want a little bit of height variation, but not too much that you notice them stretching too much. And in fact, this is probably cause for you to go in and add even more variation in the height of these models. So let's actually go back to one of them and just 
reduce the height of this one building, make it even lower. And you see, if we bring that down, it brings them down for the whole system. And you just want to probably go in and make, yeah, a few more variations of these with different heights to get that even bigger variation. Let's go and add some textures. Let's take our texture that we already made with this procedural color system and change it to uh, something called buildings text one. Delete the color ramp and the object info node. And we're just going to press control T to create a texture and select a building texture, which there'll be a link for below. And let's open up our UV editor. If we select our cube here, and this is the good thing about using an array, is that everything is done in relative to one cube. So if you want to keep extending it, you'd have to keep adjusting the UVs. And if we just scale the UV up here on our UV editor, just so everything aligns nicely, that's looking good. And you can see already we've got a building that is uh, looking pretty good. If we duplicate this one and duplicate the material as well and call it text two, we can just change the texture of this to a different building. And there we go. And you'll see it will update in here as well. We'll add a sort of another variation in here. Now, actually, this texture is off slightly. So when we unwrap this, make sure you do cube projection and this will just keep everything nice and tidy. And just scale that up so that aligns well. All right, that's looking cool. Now, basically, we've got our two textures here. Let's add this to our clusters. If we press Shift A to select all of the faces and do cube projection again and scale this up, it's as easy as that because we've already got our roof texture on top. It's going to apply to the floor and the roof. So it's only applying the building texture to the sides of the building. And if we do that again for, let's say, the second cluster, we could do it for the third one too. And in fact, let's make a third texture here call it texture three, change this again to a different building. Press A to select all the faces. Cube projection. Scale that up. There we go, we've got a third material. And actually even within these clusters, we could select one of the buildings over here in the material panel on the side. We can press plus here select one of the other textures we've made, press assign, and already we've got a different building on here. And again, you could just go through to each individual building on each cluster, select different materials you've made, and already we're getting this really nice bit of variation and a sort of nice looking building texture throughout. Now let's just go to the rest of the cubes, do the same thing, apply the material, select all the faces, cube projection unwrap, scale it up in the UV editor, and there we go, we're very, very quickly creating these textures. Now again, if you know more about texturing, you can obviously go in and do this with more precision, more detail, customize the buildings a bit more. But this is just to give you a very quick and easy insight in how to quickly customize the textures for your buildings so they're not just the, the flat, textureless, principled shaders. And this is looking really nice. This has already gone from looking kind of cartoony, kind of Minecraft, into a way more believable city. So yeah, hopefully just an insight into uh, both the cluster systems for how to generate more variation in your buildings and also just an insight into very quickly texturing some buildings as well. There are loads of tutorials out there on how to quickly generate some sci-fi buildings. I'd recommend if you go out there and look into some of those, you can apply that and just add them into the collections appropriately and they'll update into your city uh, as they should. That's it. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this helpful, please give the video a like and subscribe for more content like this. Again, the link is available below if you want to check it out and download the file yourself instead of trying to make everything from scratch. And with that, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.